Johnson was a woman of remarkable wealth and influence. She had amassed her fortune through shared business acumen and a series of successful investments. However, her greatest pride was her son, Derek. At 23, Derek was not only intelligent and well-behaved, but also industrious. He had carved out a niche for himself in the IT world, making his own money through sheer hard work and determination. Despite his mother's wealth, Derek valued his independence and the fruits of his own labor above all. Derek had always been the apple of his mother's eyes. From a young age, he displayed a keen intellect and a passion for technology. By the time he was 18, he had already started earning through freelance IT projects. His dedication to his crafts saw him working tirelessly, often locked away in his room, coding and developing softwares. At 20, Derek traveled abroad to further his studies in a prestigious university where he excelled and continued to build his career. While Derek was away, Mrs. Johnson's household continued to run smoothly. One of the key figures in maintaining this harmony was Favor, Mrs. Johnson's cook. At 22, Favor had been with Mrs. Johnson for four years. She was not only a cook, she was beautiful, smart, confident, and outspoken. Her presence added a touch of warmth and efficiency to the household, and Mrs. Johnson had come to rely on her greatly. After completing his studies, Derek returned home. Despite being back for months, he had not noticed favor. This was primarily because of his mother, in her loving and doting manner, always served him personally. Derek, being deeply engrossed in his work, rarely ventured out of his room except for meals and brief conversation with his mother. One fateful day, Derek decided to take a break from his routine. He wandered into the kitchen. There he saw favor for the first time. She was busy preparing a meal, her movement graceful and efficient. Derek was taken aback by her presence and asked, Who are you? Favor was surprised but composed and replied, I am Favor, Mrs. Johnson's cook. Favor replied, How long have you been working here? Derek asked. I've been working here for the past four years, sir. Favor replied. Derek was surprised and asked, How come I haven't seen you here before? Favor smiled and said, You've been in your room, sir, since you came, I suppose. This encounter sparked a curiosity in Derek. He started to come out of his room more often, giving himself breaks and exploring parts of the house he had long ignored. His mother, noticing the changes, encouraged him. You shouldn't always be indoors, Derek. It's time you went out, met people, and perhaps find a wife. One evening, Derek came out of his room to find his mother in the parlor. They sat together, chatting and enjoying each other's company. Their conversation soon turned into a friendly argument about a trivial question related to the world's history. I am certain it was in 1969, Mrs. Johnson insisted. No way, Mom. It was definitely 1967, Derek said, laughing. Mrs. Johnson, with a twinkle of an eye, said, I'll ask Favor. She knows a lot of things about these things. Derek chuckled. What could Favor possibly know about the world's history? His mother replied with confidence. Then you don't know Favor. Intrigued and a bit skeptical, Derek watched as his mother called out Favor. Favor, could you please come here for a moment? Favor immediately rushed to the parlor, wiping her hands on a towel. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Johnson popped the question. Do you know what year the first moon landing was? Without hesitation, Fever replied. It was in 1969, ma'am. Now Armstrong and Booz Aldrin were the first human to land on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Wow! Derek was amazed by her prompt response. He quickly pulled out his phone and checked Google, confirming that she was indeed correct. Fever left the room after Mrs. Johnson had turned her. I told you, Mrs. Johnson said to her son, smiling. Derek was still surprised and curious. He had to ask his mom. Mom, is she a graduate? His mother replied. Favor is not a graduate. She only finished secondary school, but she reads a lot. Derek was still in shock. He had actually looked down on her, thinking she knows nothing. Days passed, weeks passed, 
Derek, now genuinely curious, began to take more interest in Fable. He wondered what else she knew and how she had acquired such knowledge. Derek observed Fable more closely. He noticed how she handled various tasks with ease and efficiency, but what impressed him most was her knowledge on a wide range of topics. One evening, Derek overheard Fable's discussion on the benefits of different cooking oil with his mother. Mrs. Johnson, olive oil is great for salad and light cooking because it is rich in monounsaturated fats. But high heat cooking, avocado oil is better due to its high smoke point, she explained. Another time, Derek found favor reading a book about classical music during her free time. He approached her and struck up a conversation. You enjoy classical music, huh? He asked. Yes, I do. Favor replied, I find it very soothing and inspiring. Mozart's composition are some of my favorites. Derek was continually surprised and impressed by her knowledge. She wasn't just a cook, she was well read and cultured, qualities he hadn't expected to find. Derek found himself increasingly drawn to Favor. Her beauty was undeniable, but it was her confidence and the way she carried herself that truly captivated him. He admired how she managed the kitchen and interacted with his mother. Slowly, he began to give her green lights, small gestures indicating his interest. Derek would linger in the kitchen, asking favor about her day and offering to help her with small tasks. He complimented her cooking and found excuses to be around her. Despite his efforts, favor acted as if she didn't notice his advances. She maintained her professional demeanor, focusing on her work and keeping their interaction cordial. Derek's feelings for favor grew stronger with each passing day. He decided to be more direct, inviting her to join him for a walk in the garden. Each time, favor politely declined, citing her duties and responsibilities. Derek respected her decision but didn't give up. Favor slowly began to lower her guard allowing herself to enjoy Derek's company. Since he was only being friendly, they started spending time together, finding solace in their conversations and shared interest. Derek was patient and understanding, never pushing too hard, but always there for her. One day, while walking in the garden, Derek turned to favor and said, I admire you a lot, your strength and your intelligence. I've been watching you for quite some time and I must say, I really do like your composure. I've come to like you a lot, Favor. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you can, Favor replied. Derek continued. How old are you? I am 26, sir, Favor replied. Derek smiled. 26 is not bad. Uh, do you have a boyfriend? He asked. Favor chuckled. I don't have a boyfriend, sir. Derek smiled. Can you just keep this sad thing? I am Derek and I appreciate if you call me by my name. Derek continued. I don't also have a girlfriend. I pretty didn't give relationship any attention until I met you. Fever looked at him confused. I have fallen in love with you, Fever, and I'm really serious about this. Will you please give us a chance? Fever didn't see this coming at all. She saw the depth of his emotions in his eyes. She took a deep breath and replied, Sir, I can't accept your offer to be your girlfriend. It's not right. Derek's heart sank. Why, Favor? What's wrong? She shook her head, avoiding his eyes. Please understand. It's for the best. Derek felt a wave of hurt and confusion. The days that followed were unbearable. Favor became distant, avoiding him whenever possible. Despite her growing feelings for him, she feared bringing disrespect to Mrs. Johnson, believing that as a house help, she had nothing to offer. Derek tried to talk to her several times, pleading with her to reconsider, but Favor kept on rejecting him. Please, just think about it, Derek would say. Favor remained resolute. Though her heart ached as much as his, but she couldn't bear the thought of disappointing Mrs. Johnson or complicating the household dynamics. Derek was persistent. One afternoon, unable to bear the distance any longer, Derek went straight to Favor's room. He knocked before entering. Favor, please, I need to talk to you, he said. Favor hide widening in fear. 
Derek, you shouldn't be here. What if your mother sees you here? He knelt before her, desperation in his voice. I don't care, Favor. I need to know why you're always rejecting me. Favor's heart pounded with fear and conflict. Derek, please, leave my room. What are you doing? Please stand up and leave. Derek was pained and asked, Why do you keep chasing me away? Am I not good enough for you? Favor's heart sank with such statement. Please don't say that. Your mother won't like this. She has plans for you, big plans, and I'm not part of them. She has invested so much in your education and you can't settle for a cook. Derek was shocked. Is that why you've been rejecting me, Favor? Because you think my mother won't approve? Favor nodded. Yes. Derek immediately left the room and went to his mother's room. His face was pale and his eyes were filled with sorrow. Mrs. Johnson looked up, concerned. What is the matter, Derek? Taking a deep breath, he confessed. Mom, I love Favor. She's the only woman I've ever loved, but she rejected me because she thinks you won't approve. Mrs. Johnson's expression shifted from shock to understanding. She took Derek's hand, sat him down, and asked him to be calm. My pride. When you walked into this room looking like this, I was scared for a second that you are hurting. I never expected to hear that love is responsible for this. My pride. If you say you love Favor, Favor is not a bad choice. If she makes you happy, I support you. She's a good girl, and I love her too. Derek was stunned by his mother's response. Really, mom? Mrs. Johnson smiled. Yes, really. I'll talk to her. Derek was really grateful. His expression turned to smiles and laughter. He hugged his mom and thanked her. Later that evening, Mrs. Johnson called Favor to her room. Favor entered, feeling nervous. Yes, ma'am, you called. Mrs. Johnson looked at her. Sit, Favor, she said. I called you here to have a discussion with you. I hear my son asked you to be his girlfriend and you rejected his proposal. Favor, I am like a mother to you and I want you to be honest with me. Favor nodded, feeling nervous. Do you love Derek as much as he loves you? With fear in her eyes, she replied. Yes, ma, I, I love Derek, her voice shaking. But, but I told him I'm not interested, ma. I, I didn't want to disappoint you. Mrs. Derek laughed. Why is that, Favor? Because I'm not good enough for him, ma, Favor replied. Mrs. Derek smiled at her. Favor, you see, I love you as a daughter, and I will tell you the truth. When you see a good man, and he professes love to you, know that he saw something good in you before approaching you. A man who loves you is ready to do anything to make you the woman he wants. I want you to know that you have my full support. If you both are happy together, that's all that matters. Thank you, Favor. You may leave. Favor was overwhelmed with emotions. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Miss Johnson. She left the room. The next day, Derek found Favor in the kitchen. He approached her, his heart pounding. Favor, my mother has talked to me. She supports us. Please give us a chance. Favor looked at him, her face full of smiles. Derek, I was scared initially. But if your mother supports us, then yes, let's give this a chance. Derek was blushing. So does that mean you love me? He asked. Favor smiled and nodded. Derek said, please, I need to hear it from you. I need to hear the word. Favor was shy, but said it. I love you, Derek. Derek carried her up in excitement and kissed her. He promised to be the best boyfriend ever for making him the happiest man on earth. They both went to Mrs. Johnson to share the good news with her. Mrs. Johnson was happy for them and welcomed Favor officially to the house, now as her daughter-in-law, not a cook. Their relationship, once fraught with uncertainty, began to blow zone. Derrick and Favor faced their fears and doubts. Supported by Mrs. Johnson's blessing, their love grew stronger every passing day, a testament of the power of perseverance, understanding, and genuine connection. Thank you so very much guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this story.
please do also like, share, and subscribe to Substance TV for more amazing stories. See you guys in my next video. Until then, stay splendid.